In this age of terrorism, if you do a flight school, the FBI is alerted. But you can buy a machine gun, and the FBI doesn't know. And you think no, that's, that's responsible? That you ever been in a gun show? Yes, I have. You yes, know, I you have. Don't, you can buy if any you... weapon you want there, and there's no reporting anyway. You can walk right no, out. No, you with don't it. have to. You, you can't go out and just go and buy a bazooka, as you suggest, or a fully automatic machine gun. There are laws on the books. You can that buy require... an AK-47 uh, uh, in this country, and no federal agency will know you buy it. And as the guy in Colorado proved, you can buy a mass amount of ammunition on the net, okay, and nobody's reporting. Look, here's my deal, and you tell me where I'm wrong. If you sell heavy weaponry, all right, semi-automatics, automatics, ammunition, all you do is you file with the FBI. And that way, the FBI can cross-reference, all right? Say the FBI has you on a terror watch list, and then it comes in that you're buying an AK. Well, the FBI is going to put you under surveillance. Say this guy was bought 60,000 rounds in Colorado, which he did. And the FBI in Denver got wind of that. They would have been watching him. All right? This just makes common sense. And the head shake was not an I agree, but no, he doesn't agree that the congressman from Utah. Now, when you see me and Bill O'Reilly on the same page here, either worlds are colliding or there may be, just maybe, a tipping point or some common ground. And, and again, we're joined uh, by, among others, uh, uh, Joe Carvin and Joe. I think at least as much as people want to go to their respective corners on this, there is a middle. Um, and we talked about political courage before the break here. You think there's enough that there's a chance that after this election, maybe something can get done? Uh, look, I think that we have to make sure that we have to hold our uh, official, uh, public officials to account. We absolutely need political courage in all aspects of, of our government today. Ultimately, the problems facing the nation today are enormously serious. We're effectively, you know, bankrupt. Eventually, we may talk about the fiscal situation. No one's prepared to tell you that. Our public officials have become so beaten down that they're afraid to tell you the truth about the situation in the country. I can't believe that the officials aren't prepared to take a stand on this. You need to take a stand. You need to be held to account. But you, I think we, you support sure. the assault weapons ban. Yeah. Would you be willing to, to argue it out and fight within your own caucus Absolutely. if you're lucky enough of to course. get elected? Look, at the end of the day, uh, Richard, you talk about the tipping point. We need to bring this country together. The challenges facing this nation are uh, severe and serious. So we need to bring this country together. We need to begin to generate consensus. What happens is, I, I took a course called uh, To Be a Politician at the Kennedy School of Government. And, and you have these valence issues. You can see the politicians at work trying to create separation so they can distinguish themselves and, 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 and get elected, rather than solve problems. But I think a, we need to solve problems. Is there a way to solve this with government? Because my life seems to prove, I remember the Kennedy assassinations as a kid, and now I'm much older. There's been no progress on this at all. Why would anybody believe government could fix this when a president and his opponents both said over the weekend, but who's we may never it? understand evil. But who's wow, fix what it? a cop if out. Government we won't understand evil, but we'll argue about guns for 50 years and get nothing done. Let's start understanding evil. Who's gonna fix it? Well, if it's you have gotta be the feds in this case, because for me the problem has been you talked about New York City, you're 100% right, right? But yet, all of a sudden, you go into Pennsylvania, and it might as well be a different world. And it yet, and then you world. look at New York City's <laughs> mayor, or you'll talk to the Philly mayor, and the iron pipeline coming up from Virginia and North Carolina flooding their city streets with guns. If it's not done at a federal level, and we keep trying to do this thing piecemeal, it never works. The database point that O'Reilly was making, to me, is the most compelling argument. We had a big fight in here in New York about uh, pharmacies, that they weren't, it was elective, if the pharmacists were going to put into their databases if some guy came in and bought 5,000 scripts of Vicodin or whatever, right, even though he's using a crayon to fill out the thing. Once you're forced to do that, it's not going to solve the problem, but what it at least do is the guy calls your name up and says, time out. Andrew Whitman's coming in here for another, you know, basically a, a, a two boxes or crates of, of painkillers, sorry, Andrew. And the point is, he won't get the script. If at least you have a database, you can have a right to bear arms, but at a certain point you say, wait a second, this guy's not a terrorist. I'm not giving him a gun. But, but the, the NRA is not going to let you do that. But you know what, that. Dominic, I only make this point to you. And I'm not naive, but we said this in our meeting earlier. If I told you 10 years ago that we'd have a black president, if I told you 10 years ago the gays were going to marry um, in more and more states, in, in New York being among them, right? Um, 
if I told you that um, gays would be able to serve openly in the military, if I went through all those things, you'd say not in your lifetime, pal. But things do change, and I know but, they say uh, the same all thing. Those, all of those changes cha follow changes in popular sentiment and, and people's opinions. But you show me the polls, yes, Andrew. No. The popular sentiment, they want not an erosion of the Second Amendment, but they want restriction. I understand, but it's the way these things get framed and the way the debate gets, gets carried on. Yes, there are some elements where... Uh, people but agree, you had a little. You had a, you're, you you're a shot far. of political courage tonight on this set, mm -hmm. okay? Where you had a Republican taking a position here that he wants some restrictions. Now, I didn't get rid of the Second Amendment, but he wants some restrictions. But there's no I evidence in the political class to do that. There's no reason a Democrat is going to put his yeah, neck on the line and say, I, "I'm going to push for you know extending under." And there's no reason uh, I, uh, that a lot of Republicans are going to do the same thing and fear the reprisals, fear an NRA-sponsored primary well, challenger coming back. Wouldn't you have made the same uh, argument for me for civil rights, though? Wouldn't you have said there was a disincentive? Uh, for the Southern Democrats and, and, and others even in the North to really push here um, to have complete integration in this country? I think the poll think at the time, by the way, the, the, the poll at the time when the, the Supreme rights. Court ruled it, it was less than 40 percent that they approved with that decision. No, I know, but in the in the intervening years between that decision and the Civil Rights Act of '64, you started to see changes in. in I'm saying assembly. there are profiles in courage in our nation's history, and I think I'm not naive. You're probably more right than I am. Okay, but I think. If you just throw up your hands and say they'll never go for it, the NRA is too powerful, uh, we're just going to keep having the same conversation. How about you guys? I'm but why do we think it. it would work? Why do we think any government action to ban a particular weapon would have anything to do with stopping maniacs from taking huge loss of life? Why do, why do we think that? Because if you couldn't, see any because if you couldn't get an automatic good. weapon, then yeah. maybe you wouldn't be able to maybe. do it. Well, that's, no, I guess no, that's the problem with this argument. The the it's day. a maybe no, no, argument. Yeah. The can of gasoline that he could go get and topple over well, him with a, did, a, a dollar lighter set him on fire. My point is we're not looking at evil. President Obama says we may never know. It's so easy to cop out on the killer and go after the weapon. It's an embarrassment to a country. There's no certainty in America. Be, so you need a comprehensive solution. You need a comprehensive solution. I think you're at the tipping point. There's a million things you could talk about here. Political courage. Well, how we fund our candidates. You know, our elective system. Sure. That's look the at, problem so there, right there's there. a whole. You know, when did the NRA run the United States of America? I mean, I, you know, I, 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 you know I, I, they have reasonable positions and, and, and some points, but they don't run the United States of America. I, I'm shocked that all these politicians are terrified of the NRA. Uh, you know, and, 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 but, and, and you're right, the, the, the assault ban weapon, uh, you know, ban, Very uh, not, uh, in and of itself won't solve, solve anything yet. You know, it's got to be comprehensive. Let, let's talk about our family values. And, you know, and, 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 I, and I, yeah, I don't know, are we news, comfortable I, with government? Ed, America's always been about incrementalism. Right. Okay, we don't do anything overnight in this country. It takes a while. And just look at the last 12 months here in terms of major social changes, mm. okay? A lot of people said it would never happen, but it's the long slog. And I think in this case, at least having the dialogue is a start here. And I think a lot of people are surprised, not just Joe, but other people have said, enough already. If I told you Bill O'Reilly would have said what he said on the set, okay, you would have said probably not. But I think people say, I'm tired of, of reporting about six-year-old kids, um, you know, dying. And I, I held a prop up last night. It's 26 pages long of just um, mass shootings in this country since 2005. So I, I'm, for one, tired of, of doing this thing here.